part of Iron 4 begins in 1936. Within a year, Spain blows up into separate states, warring against each other. But why does this happen? What went wrong? And how did this bloody civil war play out in reality? The story begins in the late 19th century. Spain, in this time, existed as a very rural, mostly unindustrialized nation with extremely strong Catholic roots. In 1868, Queen Isabella of Spain was deposed because of her secret marriage with a low-ranking military officer. This tarnished the idea of monarchy in the eyes of many Spaniards, resulting in a series of events which led to the declaration of the First Spanish Republic. This republic would fail quickly and the monarchy was restored soon after. After. But the divisions that would tear Spain apart 50 years later can easily be traced back to this moment. The year is now 1931. The Spanish king, Alfonso XIII, was deeply unpopular. He had lost support of the army in the 20s because of a failed invasion of Morocco, and the entire left, consisting of communists, anarchists, and socialists, hated the idea of a monarchy. Now, it is important to note that between 1931 and the time of the First Spanish Republic, Spain's empire had been lost to a war with America. Its economy, although now slightly industrial, had fallen behind most other European countries, so the mood in Spain itself was that of frustration towards the ruling elite. In this political situation, Alfonso XIII left the country and a second republic was declared under Niceto Alcalá Zamora. Niceto and his government promised drastic change. He wanted to reduce the importance of religion to the state and pledged that more rights would go to labour unions as well as autonomy for the Basque country and Catalonia. Now it goes without saying that Spain had changed culturally and demographically as more people had relocated to the cities and social reform had become more popular of an idea. But a massive portion of religious, right-wing Spaniards began to feel alienated by the magnitude of the new government's reforms. On the other side of the political spectrum, as the years went on, these reforms were implemented slowly, extremely slowly. So the left as well as the right became more and more disappointed with the status quo. The Anarchist Party, or CNT, would order strikes all over the country, but these would be put down by Republican troops, which further lost the government favour from the far left. In the 1933 general election, the CNT refused to participate and after the victory of the White Ring Seda party, the reforms that actually had been passed were now beginning to be reversed. In this time, the military was slowly purged of all left-wing influence. The following year, the CNT retaliated in Asturias by organising riots with an alliance of anarchists and communists. It was at this time that one Francisco Franco, a young general, was sent along with the prestigious Army of Africa to put down the revolt, which was done brutally but effectively. Because of this failure, a united popular front was declared, which was an alliance of all left-wing parties to compete with the right. After a financial scandal in the Seda party, elections were held in 1936, which saw the United Front win. Shortly after this, order broke down as Spaniards were forced to choose sides between a traditional centralised right-wing future or a decentralised experimental Soviet-style path forward. In this period of chaos, the leader of the fascist Falange party, Jose Antonio was arrested. The army, now overwhelmingly right-wing, saw the disorder and greater autonomy that regions like Catalonia had been getting and believed that without intervention, the nation would dissolve into nothing. So Jose Sanjolo, a man who had already attempted a coup at the beginning of the Republic, began to organise another. He reached out to monarchists, traditionalists, fascists and nationalists to ally with him and overthrow the government. In July, the government began a crackdown of the Falange party and everyone related to it. Many important right-wing figures were executed, showing that the government had lost control of the country and that the situation in Spain could now not be solved peacefully. The coup was ready and on July the 17th, the elite African army began a revolt in Spanish Morocco, led by their leader, Francisco Franco. He hoped that the new Republican government would surrender due to internal pressure under its new 
new Prime Minister, Jose Giral, it didn't. After this, generals in every city would rise up with the troops under their command. This resulted in urban skirmishes igniting all over the country as the army battled with the police who reluctantly sided with the Republic. As a result, the coup misfired and dragged on over several days. The nationalists were unable to destroy the government and so the coup descended into a civil war. After the smoke cleared, some cities fell to the nationalists and some would not, which caused a front line to form, splitting the country in two. The nationalists were able to capture Lyon, most of Castile, including the city of Valladiv, as well as Seville in the south. The Republicans held on to the Asturias region in the north, Catalonia, Valencia and most importantly, Madrid. The nationalists now controlled the majority of the arable land in Spain, which would be used to feed the massive number of conscripts and volunteers who would begin to fight on their side, whereas the Republic held on to more wealthy regions, including most of the heavy industry in the country. Right now, nationalists had the advantage of ideological unity, at least compared to the government, which was only standing due to their common hatred of the right. However, strategic unity was a different story. The bulk of the nationalist forces were concentrated in Lyon and Seville, but the most elite fighting force in the country, the African division, was still trapped, well, in Africa. This problem would have to be solved as the navy, which mostly sided with the Republicans, prevented the nationalists from connecting their forces, which could end up being the deciding factor in the war. Thankfully for the nationalist cause, Nazi Germany and fascist Italy had sympathy for Franco, who would soon be declared leader of the Falange party. They organised the African army to be transported to Seville, where Franco would then push north towards Madrid, connecting the front lines. Franco would be given the title Commander-in-Chief, then soon after, Caudillo, meaning the official military head. Franco would go on to play a pivotal role in uniting the many right-wing factions in a single direction for the future of Spain. Madrid will be put under siege in November, but was unable to be taken, whereas other peripheral offensives did succeed, like like Malenga in the south and some rich industrial regions in the north by mid-1937. 1938 proved to be the most intense year of the war, as the Nationalist Spring Offensive in Aragon was a huge success, splitting the Republicans in two. The Battle of Ideologies attracted foreign volunteers from all over the world to fight on both sides of the conflict, in support for their favoured beliefs. A famous example of this would be George Orwell, who would fight for the Republicans and go on to write the famous British novel 1984. Nations also backed each side. Germany, Italy and Portugal proved to be the nationalist sponsors, whereas the Soviet Union and to a lesser extent France supported the Republic. This would be the main reason why historians called the Spanish Civil War the first true proxy conflict of the 20th century. By the end of 1938, government forces were now forced to surrender in the north due partially to German bombing raids and an early 1939, the Nationalists pushed on to Barcelona, taking the city and capturing 1,500 prisoners. On the 28th of March, Madrid was captured, but shortly before this, the CNT, led by Sigismund Calzado, ignited a civil war within a civil war against the Republic and seized control. He tried to negotiate a peace treaty, but Franco would only accept unconditional surrender. Franco then launched a final offensive, taking Madrid and destroyed destroying the Republic. On April the 1st, he declared victory and became de facto dictator of Spain. Franco would now have to balance the visions of many right-wing factions, some wanting the monarchy to be restored, some didn't, and on top of that, the surviving Republicans' fates now rested in his hands. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like this one.